exciting episode of Bob's Sign Man. Today we're going to look at some um, troubles with transfer tape sometimes. Um, working with signs all the time, I always come across little little hiccups here and there. And if, uh, several viewers have asked me, they're having problems with transfer tape, air bubbles, how do I take care of air bubbles? Well, past videos I showed you how I've applied transfer tape. And so I have a new way that I do my street signs, the little narrow ones that are, you know, like 36 by 9. Um, whole different ball game now. I've been using this new technique and it's working pretty good. So I'd like to share with you some of the stuff I use. Where a couple of tips though before we get going is I always use fresh transfer tape. I got a company called Denko who delivers products to me the next day. With all this stuff going on and shortages and everything, I still rely on this company next day. Thank you, um, Denko. So I, I do that and I, I've been doing some other things. Um, Change, changing up things, how I do stuff, making my street signs and applying the transfer tape. It, it all starts off with getting your transfer tape setting on there nice and easy. Don't don't stretch it so you're not, you know, bringing your design in and, and causing wrinkles and stuff and cause you troubles. And if it's if it's you know with, with your transfer tape and if it's all over the map and it's not laying straight, it's just you're, it's not going to work. Trust me. So let's take a look at some of the transfer tape woes. That are going on and I'll show you this new technique I use it for I'll be making a street sign here and I'll show you how you use the transfer tape so let's jump into this exciting episode right now hello everybody welcome to this exciting episode of Bob the sign man today uh, take a little look at our transfer tape woes sometimes um, we have problems with the uh, transfer tape and there's various reasons why you have problems with transfer tape uh, for example I have this street sign uh, Lorraine Drive I'm gonna cover and it's off of a new roll of EC green EC and it lays nice and flat, okay? Sometimes your rolls don't lay nice and flat. They'll, they'll um, when they get close to the end of the roll, they'll, they'll curve on you. So when this is nice and flat, it's easy. Sometimes with your transfer tape, what happens is you can get it on too tight or too loose, and it affects the way that it rolls onto your, um, your sign blank. So what I have here, I have my, um, the ring drive on the EC set down nice and flat, kind of push it out so it kind of creates a little static and it sticks to the plastic table. It's nice and flat. Okay, I'll have my transfer tape that I'm able to pull that out. And what it'll do, I'll see that I have it lined up. And what I do is I'll usually pull it down tight and I'll stick it to the end of the table, okay, without it touching the design. And then I've got a, a larger squeegee, and I'll go ahead and I'll just squeegee it out. It's a nice light pressure. Okay, now, now that I have it laid out nice and flat, what I'm going to do is I'll take a smaller squeegee and I'll start pushing the air bubbles out. And since I laid it flat this way, I wanna work myself you know, back the same way that I laid it down. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure because what you wanna do is you don't wanna make that um, transfer tape tight on there. And for those of you who are using a digital printer, good for you, this doesn't really affect you, but I'm sure before you started with this, you would remember the problem sometimes with the transfer tape. And if you have any air bubbles on the top or anything, go ahead and push them out. Now what I'll do, cut my transfer tape, I'll flip it over, and I'm going to trim out the, the sticky transfer tape off of here. Okay, next step what I'm going to do is I want to apply this to my sign blank. It's a 36 inch sign blank. It's a point a 0.125 thickness and I'm going to do a double side. But before I do that, I've got an oversized sign blank that I've covered with some old uh, DG3 that was kind of left at the end of the roll that was scratched up a little bit. And what I want to do then is take my transfer that I had just made I'm going to center it in the middle so it has a nice flat surface. If you try to roll it through the roller just like this, it's going to curve and it's not going to be very flat. So what I'll do is I go about halfway in the middle. 
Okay, I'm gonna roll it out. You can hear kind of some of the air bubbles popped out. Now I'll roll it back the other way. Now I'll just roll the whole length of it. Now I have a nice flat surface of my transfer tape. And the transfer tape's not on too tight where it's gonna, um, you know, uh, where, where it won't bunch up the, the green EC film that I have on there. And what I'll do now is I'm gonna trim these in half. What I usually will do with my sign blank is I'll just go ahead and work on this pink surface. See, this is a 36 inch. And if I was to go bigger, I would use a bigger sign blank, but I don't have any, um, I'm just using the 36 for now. And what the, you're supposed to do is you have a half inch all the way around. I kind of eyeball these. I've been doing them for a long time now. And I kind of get it just about where I need it. So with these, what I've had is the problem with this EC film. If I go ahead and put it through the roller and I pinch the roller, you know, I roll out part of it and then it seems to go crooked on me. So what I do is I turn the whole thing sideways. Okay, what I'll do is I'll turn the whole thing sideways. Okay, then I'll pinch it in my roller. Okay, so what I'll do then is I'll take it and I'll fold it in half. If I can get a nice even fold on it, I'll do it. Um, if you can't, you can go ahead and trim the part on. But I just like to kind of tuck it out under so it's nice and even. Uh, always be careful not to touch your green EC because you'll leave fingerprints in it. And then what I'll do is I'll just roll it out nice and slow. Okay. Then I flip it over. And I'll pull out the other side. Careful not to touch your EC. And then I'll just go ahead and apply a little bit of pressure to it. Not too much, though, to, to where you're pulling it too hard. You just kind of let it flow the way it wants to go. Then I'll roll it a couple times. Make sure I get those hands. Okay, now that I have this Lorraine drive on one side, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the transfer tape on because I wanna cover the other side of the sign. So I got another piece of 36 by nine. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply the sheeting on the other side. I'm still gonna leave the Lorraine drive on, but also what I'm gonna do now Like, uh, is I'm going to leave that sign blank on there so that way my design doesn't get pinched through the roller it'll, it'll stay nice and flat here and it won't um, distort or discolor or make some weird patterns so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and this side okay what I'll do now is I'm going to trim this side up up all the excess okay I got this side all trimmed up the little rain on one side now I have my new fresh side of DG3 and what I'll do turn my length sideways Okay, what I'll do now is I'll put my blank back under there. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid running this side when I put the transfer on. I'm, I'm trying to avoid running it over the top of the iron roller, which will kind of, steel roller, which will kind of, um, It'll squish down the DG3 and it'll just, it, it won't look good. It, it kind of makes a pattern in there that I don't like. And any indentations in the roll or anything, it'll pick up on there. So what I do, go ahead and use this sign blank. I'll flip it upside down. 
Whenever you're doing a double side, I always check twice to make sure that you're not gonna put your other design upside down. Uh, nothing like getting out in the field and having that happen. Um, and that looks pretty good. And like I said, what I'll do, I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna turn my design sideways. I always try to center it in the roller as much as I can. So we'll do the same thing again. Pull it off and we'll fold it under nice and even. Roll this side out nice and slow. Take the other side off. And then we'll roll it out nice and slow. And we'll go ahead and just roll it out a few times on. Okay, now both sides have the transfer tape on, and we protected the um, design from rolling on that steel roller. And let's uh, unmask this and see what it looks like. All right. Let's pull this off and see what it looks like. All right. Well, this side turned out absolutely perfect. I mean, there's not an air bubble under there a wrinkle, anything. I mean, it's just perfect. And we'll see how the other side turns out. And the other side of it turned out perfect also. No, no air bubbles, no anything under there. Okay, now on our street signs, what we do is I have these printed up. It's a it's our county logo, Napa County, California, with the you know great cluster in the hills and the vineyards. Um, it's printed on some engineer grade underneath, and it's reflective. It'll show through. Um, necessarily, they don't necessarily have to be reflective at night, um, as long as you can see the street sign. It's mostly for the daytime. And what I do is I just kind of center them in there. And what we've started doing is this is a six inch logo, okay? And what I do is I cut out the circle six and a half inches, okay? So this will be six and a half inches and the logo is six. So it'll give it a little bit of definition around the, the outside at night too. You can see the circle on there. And it just looks like, I think it looks better with the border around. It doesn't look like a sticker just plastered on the sign like some of our first signs. And what I'll do is I'll put both logos on, and there we have it. So what I think a lot of problems people have with the transfer tape, um, you know, with leaving wrinkles and stuff, uh, if you try to roll it through the roller like this, I have worse luck because it, it'll turn on me and it just doesn't work out right. Um, the transfer tape, I try to keep, I don't keep a whole big stock on it because I have this company, Denko, who um, if I order it today, I'll get it tomorrow. So I'm not so worried about having um, lots of transfer tape on hand. Um, it seems like the longer you keep it around, it loses some of its um, stickiness and it starts sticking harder and it's harder to work with. So I keep my transfer tape fresh. I keep my design flat as I can. And if you do have problems with it curling up, sometimes you can take an old sign blank, an oversized sign blank, and put a couple of them and leave it there for, and put some weight on top of it. Leave it there overnight if you have to, especially like if I'm going to come in Monday and make some signs like today, I could have left it over the weekend. It'll be nice and flat. Um, try to work your table, you know, um, run your hand over it, get a little bit of static, and it'll stick periodically to your, for a little while, it'll stick to your table. Um, some other tips you can use is just be careful when you put, lay that transfer tape out. Don't stretch the transfer tape because then you're going to, um, if you stretch the transfer tape, you're going to, you know, pull in your design a little bit. You want to leave that transfer tape to sit on there nice and even and freely and um, basically and I, I set my roller for about 80 pounds 
and I, it goes slow, take your time, and like this sign here, both sides, absolutely perfect. There's no um, air bubbles or anything in it. Well, there you have it. Another way of applying transfer tape. So what I'm thinking of doing that, that blank that I keep turning around and moving, I'm thinking of just making one since my roller's 48 by 48, and that's about the biggest sign I ever do for street signs. I just might just do a 48 by 48 blank sign and leave it on the table so I don't have to, you know, always move that thing around. Um, I'm trying to keep, when I do those double-sided signs, I want to keep my other side off of that steel roller. But if I'm just making one-sided street signs and stuff or one-sided traffic signs, you really don't have to worry about that. But watch it. If you ever flip your design over to put something on the other side, you got to protect that other side. Um, so whenever, you know... Um, things aren't working out right or whatever, you know, I always try and try and try, but you've always got one thing you can do. That's right. You can always turn to the side, man. As always, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next episode.